Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. second grade. Welcome back to our PBS classroom. My name is Mrs. Vane. I'm so excited to be here with you so that we can become amazing readers and writers. Okay, I have another favorite book to share with you guys. Well, actually, these have become favorites, but because all this week I'm going to be featuring books that were recommended from the librarian at Pio Elementary. So thank you, Ms. Parker, for recommending these books for us. The first book, or today's book, is called Llama Destroys the World. Isn't that an amazing book? I thought so when I saw the cover. But did you know that if you wanted to see what the book was about, you can to open the book and on the inside of it has a jacket, what we call a book jacket. It gives you a little bit about what the book is going to be about. So it says here, Llama has everything he needs for a great week. Cake. Um, Lost the most delicious um, variety. Pants, made for dancing. A giant ripping his pants. What? And a black hole. Wait, what? The end of the world. That wasn't supposed to happen. So, just from reading that, I'm thinking, what an interesting book. I want to keep reading to see what's going to happen because the title was Llama Destroys the World. Don't you think so? Well, if you want to check this book out to read, you can check on the Sora app if you have Sora. Um, you can check at your county library or at your school library. Remember, this one came from Pio Elementary. So check it out and tell me what you think of the book. Now, don't forget, you can also write to me and tell me what you're reading or learning. You can use the address that you see below. Tell me, um, write me a letter and don't forget to include your home address or your return address and I'll send you one of these fun activity books. Okay, and guess what? They don't cost anything. All you have to do is write and send and give me your address so we can send it to you. All right, awesome. Okay, boys and girls, are you guys ready to get started? Oh, I see thumbs up, good job. Now, this week is a little bit different because this is our what we call our week six in our um, unit of learning. So this week we're gonna be focusing on our writing because you guys have become amazing readers. Now, we're gonna really focus on becoming amazing writers, which I know you guys are becoming. So th today, we're gonna focus on our grammar lesson, which, which we're gonna focus on pronouns, our mechanics, um, and we're gonna focus on quotation marks, and then we're gonna go into our genre writing. And this week, we're focused on explanatory, or what we call informational or informative essay. Yeah, that's right, we're gonna be writing an explanatory essay this week. So make sure that you are coming back every day so that you are getting um, each part of what, what I call the, or what we call the writing process, okay? So we have a lot to learn, so let's get started. Are you ready? Awesome. So let's start with our grammar. Now remember, grammar is important to learn because once we get into our revising, this is where our grammar is really going to come into play because it's rereading and making sure that your sentence and, or your paragraph makes sense. Okay, And it's also going to, um, knowing grammar will help you in making your writing sound a lot better. So today, we are going to be focusing on pronouns. Now, what is a pronoun? Well, a pronoun takes the place of one or more nouns. So the pronouns I, he, she, it, and you are what we call singular pronouns. So here's my sentence. Amy likes to help people. Well, here's my noun, Amy. What can I replace Amy with? Because when I'm writing, I don't want to keep saying Amy, 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 Amy. Nope, I can replace it with the pronoun she. You see that? Now the pronouns we, you, and they can take the place of a plural noun or a noun and a pronoun together. So here are some examples. People vote in elections. Well, people, those are, that's a plural noun. Instead of saying people again, we can use the pronoun they. 
Connor and I, here's a noun and a, a pronoun together, right, are good citizens. To replace Connor and I, because there's two of them, we can use the pronoun we. We are good citizens. You see how that works? Now, some pronouns refer to people or things that are not named. So like everything can be a pronoun, okay? Everything is in place. Nobody wanted to go home. Nobody can also be a pronoun, okay? So let's practice working with some pronouns. So if we're writing and we're saying our class will have an election tomorrow, instead of saying our class again, what can we say? Here's our class. We can say we or you. If it's our, then we will vote in the morning because we includes you, okay? Let's go on to the next one. We will pick Jim or Sue to be the class leader. Blank are both good choices. Now in this sentence, we will pick, and here are your choices. We're gonna pick Jim or Sue. So that means our pronoun to match our nouns are, should be, they are both good, um, good choices. Did you see that? Good, let's keep going. Number three says, Sue helps clean the room after school. That's right, here's my noun, Sue. Instead of saying Sue again, do I say it or she is a good leader? Good job, I heard you, she is a good leader. Good job. Okay, last one. Carrie and I will count the votes. Blank will count them, oh, we or they will count them during recess. Well, here are my nouns, Carrie and I, so it's gonna be we or they. When I is included, it's we. Good job, boys and girls. So as you're writing, make sure that your uh, nouns are matching up to your pronouns, right? Because we don't want to use the same nouns over and over. Now, let's go into our mechanic. And remember, this week or today, we're going to be focusing on quotation marks. And this is what we um, will look at when we start editing, which is another part of the writing process. Because when we edit, we want to check our mechanics to see if it is correct. And today, we're going to focus on quotation marks. So remember, quotation mark, uh, quotation marks set off the exact words a person says. We use quotation marks in the beginning and end of what a person says. So here's an example. Julie said, start quotation. Okay, she's um, going to start talking. I think we can clean up the playground in quotation, right? Those are the words that are coming from her mouth. So let's practice with one. Ready? It says, Josh asked, can you see the papers all over the playground? What was he asking? Right here, we're going to start the quotations. Can you see the papers all over the question? Who's asking a question? And then we're going to end it. You see how I already have the ending quotation? Don't forget, we need a starting and ending quotation. Let's just do one more. Ready? Zach said, yes, it looks very messy. Now, are we going to put quotations on Zach said? No, because those are not the words coming out of his mouth. We're going to start quotation. Yes, it looks very messy. Don't forget our period ending quotation. You see how that works? Awesome, boys and girls. And one last one quickly. We should do something about it, said Josh. You see where it says said Josh? That's not what he's, that the words that are coming out of his mouth, the words that he was talking, the sentence actually should be, we should do something about it, start quotation, end quotation. All right, so as you're writing, when you're using quotations, make sure you're using, um, we're starting with them and ending with them. Okay, so now let's go into our genre writing for the week. And this week we're going to focus on explanatory essay. So what is an explanatory essay? Let's um, start with that. Well, an explanatory essay explains a topic clearly. It provides facts and definitions related to the topic. It uses linking words to connect ideas, and it ends with a concluding statement or section. So, when we are writing, we're gonna be using this graphic organizer to help us, right? We're gonna think of a topic, and then we need three details about that topic, okay? And that's what makes an explanatory essay. And then don't forget, we also need that concluding sentence. So, as you're writing, I want you guys to think about the what or 
how you should be writing. So I'm going to put the rubric up here, right? So the rubric is going to help you because this is what I want to see in your writing when you are finished. Okay, the highest score is what we call a four, and that's what I call an excellent paper. So how do I get an excellent paper? Well, I'm going to introduce a topic thoroughly. I'm going to develop ideas, and I'm going to um, use facts and definitions. I'm going to use a convinc convincing factual tone. I'm going to develop ideas express ideas clearly, use my linking words to organize ideas and include a strong concluding statement. Now, if I don't do all of these, uh, what we call our rubric, then I might not get a four, I might get a three. And if I don't do as much, then I might get a two or a one. You guys see that? So, what I'm really looking for when I'm writing is I'm gonna really try to work for my Four, using or introducing a topic thoroughly, developing ideas about it using facts and definition, okay? I'm gonna really use convincing factual tone to develop ideas and express ideas clearly, right? So what does that look like? Well, let me give you what I like to call a mastery writing because this second grader, Josh, wrote this um, essay and he got a four on it, but this is what he did at the end of the school year, which we're getting close at, right? So this is what I want you to be able to accomplish after practice, well, lots of practice with writing explanatory essay. So I'm gonna just quickly read it, quickly read it with me. And I want you guys to think about that four rubric. Did he include all of those statements that would get him a four? He had a, the a title called A Theme Park for Everyone by Josh G. Kids love theme park. A theme park is a place where people go on rides, watch shows, and have fun. People with special needs can't always enjoy these parks. Oh, enjoy these parks, though. That is why Gordon Hartman opened Morgan's Wonderland in San Antonio, Texas. This family fun park is made for everyone. Gordon Hartman's daughter, Morgan, has special needs. One day, she wanted to play with other kids in the pool. However, she was not able to communicate and join them. Gordon decided to build a park where everyone could have fun, enjoy rides, and do outdoor activities. At regular theme parks, people in wheelchairs can enjoy most rides. At Morgan's Wonderland, the rides are made for people with disability. For example, people in wheelchairs can ride the carousel, a ride with horses that go up and down as the ride turns. Another ride has special cars that anyone can drive. People can also play and interact with others at the park. A special sandbox allows people in wheelchairs to play in the sand. There are even swings for people in wheelchairs to glide safely back and forth. Morgan's Wonderland is a special place because it lets people with special needs have fun like everyone else. You guys see that? Awesome. So this is what we call a four paper. So boys and girls, keep coming back because this week we're going to continue and I'm going to help you get that four paper writing. All right. Have a great day and I will see you back here tomorrow. Bye-bye. to a brand new day time to learn and games to play learning things is so much fun learning is good for everyone